Well, good evening, folks. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot. I'm back with you again with the second of this week's reviews. You are looking at Hamilton Island. It's uh, off the coast of Australia, a very popular resort, jumping off point for the Great Barrier Reef tours. Um, this is um, a scenery by Ausseen. Um You may remember Ausseen did the scenery for Reef World. Well, this is their latest product. Um, before I get started on all the bits and pieces, I have to say, when I looked at the price, I did find myself frowning and kind of bulking at it. However, I've spent an hour looking over the scenery, and I'm starting to think that actually the price is well worth it. This is one of the most detailed and incredibly complete sceneries I've seen in a long time. They've done everything. You've got the terminal with internal development and people. The control tower has been developed. The marina is fully developed. Um, there are so many eating places and buildings and there are even things to discover off this island itself. You look to the left here and go around here you'll find various bits and pieces of golf course up there for goodness sake. The water texturing is stunning. The whole attention to detail that I've seen is absolutely amazing. It's not the sort of thing I do right off the bat to sort of talk about this scenery before I even get down to look at it. But like I said, the price initially kind of put me off. But I did buy it as I've explored it before we start this review. I have to say um, it's getting pretty close. The work that's been done in this is certainly makes it worth the price. So what is it? Okay, so it's Hamilton Island Airport, Yankee Bravo Hotel Mike. It's a paywear scenery by Ausseen. This is version 1.0.1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. Um, again, I can't find any mention of um, Xbox or Marketplace. It's available from Sim Market and also from Orbix. The download is 3.65 gigs and it installs at 5.77 gig. So it's fairly substantial, but then to tell you the truth, with what I've looked over in the last hour, it doesn't surprise me. It's actually smaller than some of the um, sceneries that just don't have as much detail as this one does. Um, I'll give you the sim market price because it includes VAT. It's €27.59, which equates to roughly $29.51 US, or £23.67 UK. US and UK prices are conversion estimates from the Euro and include VAT and tax, which may of course vary depending on your country of purchase. So we're looking at nearly £24 UK or nearly $30 US, which is a lot for a scenery. But then like I say, um, I've been down and had a really close look at this. They've done so much work. I probably only have one criticism and we'll go into that when I look at the scenery. So features, well features, the list is indeed long. You've got handcrafted rendition of Hamilton and Dent Island for the simulator, authentic representation of the airport, the resort and the marina, and it's truly impressive. High resolution aerial imagery, one meter DEM data, which offers the highest quality terrain, over 300 custom assets. As for the airport, Accurate representation of the airport area, complete interior modelling of the terminal, control tower and Hamilton Island Air, custom ground clutter, custom vehicles and boats, golf carts, 3D people, animated flags and fans, optimised assets taking full advantage of the LODs, realistic PBR textures, authentic aprons with custom materials and markings, accurate ground markings, static helicopters representing local operators, realistic night lighting, custom airport services configuration and custom vegetation placement. And I can tell you that all this so far, the frame rate is so fluid. As for the marina, detailed representation of the marina, plenty of po po points of interest to discover. All the main buildings surrounding the marina are authentically recreated. And that's everything, including the luxury um, marina side apartments or small buildings that are owned by the rich people that uh, frequent this particular resort. 3D boats and jetties, custom vegetation again, 
and then the resort you've got complete coverage of the resort and the hotels animated reef view exterior lifts i haven't seen those yet so we're going to have a look at them the qualia helipad 3d hobby cats in cat's eye bay and custom vegetation these are some of the things i haven't seen yet and finally, you've got multiple helipads, Hamilton Island Air, Qualia and the cruise ship, plenty of custom buildings around Hamilton Island, 3D boats around Whitehaven Beach, um, modelled houses on Titan Island and more. There's so much to this scenery. And one of the big standout features for me is the quality of the terrain. If you look at this here, the beaches... Um, and the terrain and the water effects are just truly stunning. Absolutely incredible. So much to see. And so, as I said, the price is beginning to grow on me here. So as ever, let's talk some history first. Hamilton Island Airport, also known as Great Barrier Reef Airport, Yankee Bravo, Bravo Hotel Mike, is a privately owned public use aerodrome and is the primary airport serving Whitsunday Islands as well as the principal airport of Hamilton Island itself. Part of the Whitsunday Island group, Hamilton Island is located some 6 miles or 10 kilometres east of the Australian mainland and is ideally located in the heart of the Great Barrier Reef, one of Australia's most spectacular and sought after holiday destinations and arguably one of the most beautiful islands in Australia. The airport is settled on mostly reclaimed land and is commercially served year-round by Jetstar, Virgin Australia and Qantas Airways. Hamilton Island Airport handles flights from Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane and is also the airport launch pad for scenic flights to the Great Barrier Reef and the Whitehaven Beach. Private flights and charters also fly into Hamilton Island Airport along with locally operated helicopters, light planes and seaplanes. Built in the 1980s, ANSET Australia had exclusive rights to serve the airport as part of its 50% shareholding. ANSET sold its shareholding to the BT Hotel Group in May 1998, allowing Qantas to begin serving the airport. The airport suffered heavily in September 2001 with the demise of ANSET Australia, which operated more heavily out of the airport than any other airline, with flights to Cairns, Townsville, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. In the year ending 30th of June 2011, the airport handled over 457,000 passengers, making it the 19th busiest airport in Australia. So there's quite a bit of history behind this place. Lots of people go in and out of it. It's a fantastic resort. Um, and as we go, you'll see not only the airport in detail, but also the stunning places that all the rich toffs live at as well. And as you can see by this high level shot, such a beautiful location. So let's talk runways. So runways, as you can see, I've lowered the lighting and we've got the sun going down there over in the west. Um, absolutely beautiful. So Hamilton Island Airport operates a single runway, 1432, measuring 5,794 feet or 1,766 meters. And it's both grooved and also made from asphalt. The airport lies at an elevation of 15 feet or 4.5 meters and it sits within the GMT UTC plus 10 hours time zone. Now the island does not observe daylight saving time, DST, and so it's currently 9 hours ahead of the UK. Now both ends of the runway have medium intensity runway lighting and precision approach path indicators on both sides. And this end, runway 32, which we're looking at now, has four types of RNP approach and runway 14 at the other end has three types of RNP approach so you only have RNP approach options here so quite a varied amount but as you can see here we are looking at uh, runway 32 um, you've got the um, intensity lighting the medium intensity lighting you've also got edge lights here too and here are the pappies on both sides um, so the lighting's not great as the sun goes down, so, uh, but there's enough for you to make um, an RNP type approach here. No ILSs at this airport at all. So let's go and have a quick look at the other end, runway 14. 
So here we are looking down the slopes of runway 14 and as you can see exactly the same um, features in terms of lighting um, and you've also got blue airfield edge lights as well that extend into the ramp area here on the left so again shouldn't really be a problem but you've got the pappies on both sides and again we have RNP approach options here I think there's four of them actually certainly four of them on run runway 32 and three of them on runway 14 so as I said no instrument landing system so there you go, that does it for runways and the history and the various bits and pieces. Let's get down and explore this airport close up and you can see why I'm thinking about that the prices is, is more than justified. It really is truly is a wonderful scenery and I think it's time to, to go right over it and have it and show you just exactly why I think that. Okay folks, so here we are at the... Um, threshold end of runway 32 at Hamilton Island. Now this review could easily run into two hours and obviously I don't want to go that long and bore the hell out of you but there is so much to see so I'm going to do this review in two parts. We're firstly for the um, pilots among us and those who want to see we're going to do a small sort of aerial tour here at low level so you can have a look at the runway the effects um, and the various buildings and just how it looks close up. And then for the second part of the review, I will focus on different things such as the terminal, um, the marina, um, Whitehaven Beach and some of the other things that you're going to see here. So here we are. So let's start our low level tour. So as you can see, if you look at the ground detail, I mean, it's pretty stunning. There you've got the pappies both sides of the runway. You've got uh, skid marks and stuff on the runway, so it's properly developed. But look at the terrain mesh and the beach. We're at pretty low level here, and it's been so nicely developed. And here we are, sort of on the east side of the runway. We do get this sort of bluing effect on some of the um, foliage and vegetation as you pass up here. But um, actually, it's not too bad at all. But you look at pretty much every building and just about everything here that's, that's here has been included and developed. Such a huge project. They even the little bit of swamp land down there looks great. So here we come to the helicopter area. And again, you look at the level of detail. It's just amazing. Everything's been done fence line this looks really fantastic I mean just look at this this just this really is incredible there's the control tower which we'll have a look at in a bit and there's my PMDG 737 I'd like to thank um, Matt Tank for the repaint you can find this repaint on flightsim.to I'll put a link down below later on so here's the main ramp there's the terminal and it looks really stunning. So I'm going to slow down a little bit now and we'll drop down a bit so you can see um, baggage um, and detail. There's incredible detail in and around the terminal which we will look at shortly but this all looks so real. Here we are land side of the terminal you can see the baggage dollies there, the buses there's one or two people you can see. Hotels um, and houses up there as well. Now we come across to the marina. I love the trees. And again, the resolution on the ground is so good that it looks great this low and this close up. Here are all your fancy apartments owned by the really rich people that um, have their boats here. And again, the boats are sort of, everything's sort of faithfully recreated. You can see even more in the background there. It's pretty stunning. So there's a boat dock with a lift there, look. One of the hotels up on the mountain, or the hillside I should say. And the water effects are really nice. 
it's um it's done quite well it, it looks as though the boats actually sit in the water which is pretty impressive here's one of the boats that you'll see in the reef world scenery it's just pretty amazing so now we tour the marina and you can see there are various buildings there are little restaurants hidden down here as well but the quality um, and, and you can see the water rippling away there and it looks pretty real such an incredible job has been done here Here you've got more baggage dollies and again look, all of the buildings and businesses have been fairly faithfully recreated here. Anybody for fish and chips? It's just so nicely done. Really is incredible. Okay, some parts you get a little bit of low resolution like here, but you see this pretty much is so well done that it looks really accurate, even close up. Here we've got this other beautifully detailed building there. And you go around the corner, here's some more of these fancy apartment buildings that are owned by the rich and famous. And again, you know, going up close here, look the detail, the foliage, everything is beautifully recreated here. It's absolutely stunning. There's a small recreation of the swimming pool down there. And just look at the way this beach is terraformed. I mean, it looks great. It looks, it's really impressive. I mean, you look at the terrain detail and the beach detail here. We're pretty low down and pretty close up, and yet it's still um, a view. The resolution is just stunning. It still looks pretty real, even at this low altitude. Um, it's just, it's mind-boggling. I've done an amazing job here. So here is the pebble beach at Qualia. And again, you know, you can see, I mean, look at it. It looks so beautifully real. You know, okay, it's not part of the airport and nothing maybe that you pilots are interested in. But it's just is a wonderful example of what can be achieved in the simulator here. So we head across the bay to Dent Island, which is on the other side of the airport. You've got this small island here, which looks really nice. And you're taking a helicopter trip down there. Well, this is Dent Island. And again, some beautiful beaches here. And the terrain is beautifully modelled. It just looks incredible. It's just one of the best um, terrain renderings I've seen in a long time. Well, it's a stunning beach down there. Now as we pass over the island proper, there you can see Hamilton Island Airport on the left. And here, you've got the golf course. 
complete with bunkers and again going down really close here the detail is, is amazing no loss of um, resolution at all it's just really beautiful and this lake here has been very nicely done I mean it's just wonderful and that presumably is the clubhouse once again you've got this amazing level of detail I mean the trees the foliage, the way this has been done, what a project this is. And as you can see the golf course carries on there. And again little nice little touches like this, the lighthouse here and other buildings. It's just wonderful, just incredible. So coming around on the north side of the island, you've got this wonderful beach complex here. I mean, it's got some great hotels, again a wonderful rendering of the beach. Buildings are spectacular. I mean this is stunning. The only thing that's missing from this is people. We've got, the whole thing is beautifully rendered. You've got the boats and the buildings are stunning. It'd be nice to have some people on the beach. See, so you've got the restaurant here. I mean, this is just wonderful. Again, beautifully recreated and rendered. Okay, so this is Whitehaven Beach, and as you can see, I mean, it's been it's, it's beautiful. Okay, we've got a, a little helicopter there on the beach. We had a photographic aircraft stuck in the water there, which, to be honest, is the only anomaly I can find. But you've got this incredibly long beach here that just goes on forever, and it's really beautiful. And again, we've got another aircraft, photoreal aircraft, stuck in the water there. But as you can see, you've got the odd boat, complete with a little bit of wake. So much to explore here. I mean, this is just wonderful. Pick your boat. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Beautiful. Okay, so there was the island tour. So now let's look at some of the features that we can see in this scenery. Here up by the threshold of runway 32 you've got this quarry and building works going on. Again really nicely done, the models are lovely. See again we're close up now and I mean look at the look at the weathering on these models. Stunning, they're, they're, there's no, they've left no stone unturned here when it comes to detail. And here's the main quarry that you can see. And there's a shot across the runway here, you can see the foliage and the fence line. I mean, this all looks pretty real. And remember, we're close up, so the, the definition of the resolution is really good. Okay, some shipping containers and some more debris over here. It's obviously a yard, and you've got uh, the gates there. And again, you've got signage on the gates that is so good, you get this close and you can still read it without blurring. So here's the fire station and again some really lovely looking fire tenders. 
and again going up close you can still see really good detail and behind the fire station here you've got some kind of water treatment plant which um, again is really nicely detailed here you've got fuel um, and just, just various bits and pieces again no um, nothing's been left to chance here with the detail Again, we go up close and we look at the detail on this vehicle model. This is specific to the airport, so it's not a default model. And you've even got weathering here on the tanks, which just looks great. And we have a very nice static Phenom jet here. That's beautiful detail, even up close. So here's your helicopter base on the uh, other side of the runway. Beautifully model helicopters here, mostly Robinsons by the look of it. And here's the hangar. I mean, how's this for detail? And they've even got the um, they've got a default van there, the yellow one, which usually I would think drives in and out. And you've got an animated engineer working on the helicopter there. So a quick look at the um, helicopters up close, as I would expect, the models are wonderfully detailed, there's no real problem with them at all, all PVR texturing, um, the correct Australian registrations, just wonderful, and helicopter pads properly marked, really nice. And here's the view from land side of the gate, you've got the gate there, complete with the uh, signs, all properly detailed. I mean, it's just, this is, the, the amount of detail in this scene is incredible. Okay, so there's our first big showstopper. You've got vehicles entering and going along the runway, which, um, for me, is, um, is not really a good thing. Let's see if this other thing turns off. Yes, it does. Okay, so it could be worse. They're not going all the way up and down the runway. They're just going into it and then coming out of it. But um, vehicles on the runway are a no-no for me, unfortunately. But uh, no, you know, um, that's the only fault I can find so far. So let's go and have a look at the terminal, the meat and potatoes um, of this scenery for, as far as you pilots are concerned. So firstly, as I said, this is the PMDG 737800 in the colours of Virgin Australia. It's one of the aircraft that would fly in here. And again, this repaint is by Matt Tank and you can find him on flightsim.to as tank787 so thanks Matt but also what I want you to look at is the rockery here again the terrain and the level of detail is just really really nice it's really impressive let's go a little higher and there you can see how it sits I mean it's really really quite good I like it a lot to be honest Okay, so let's look at the terminal from outside. This is airside, here's the airside ramp. Um, and you can see the terminal's nicely designed. It's accurate as per the real world. Beautifully weathered um, with windows. Um, there's no parallaxing here. What you'll see is actually inside. We'll look at that in a minute. I love the foliage, the little palm trees. And if you look at the airside ramp, you can see the ramp markings, the walkways that passengers would use to walk out to the aircraft animated flags everything is here nothing is missing again if I had one small criticism it would be nice to see some passengers and staff on the ramp so you've got this wonderful airside development but no people or at least no people outside here there we are looking across the ramp as you can see parking spaces for the Airbus um, all the stands, everything properly delineated as indeed it should be. Okay, so let's go into the terminal and let's have a look and see what we can find. Well, as you can see, beautiful attention to detail as we go in through this doorway. So we're now in one of the lounges and you can see faithfully recreated seating, lighting, even the computers for the check-in staff. And there's a shot looking out to airside. I mean, it's really, really faithfully recreated. It's wonderful. Again, the only thing's missing are the check-in staff themselves. 
I think even if they were just static, it would be nice to see some style. And again, another real fantastic thing for me. Here we are really right up close to this departures board, which is pretty small, and yet look, everything is crisp and readable. That's quality, that really is quality. And again, the restricted access signs, the sort of sign you, you see all over airport perimeters. Again, we're right up close on the window and it's <laughs> the resolution is so good you can read it even this close. This is the sort of thing that I find really impressive. So let's travel into the other side. Now we've got people. Okay, they're statics, but they are really good. They're really good. They only start to blur when you get this close. But actually this isn't all of them. Let's continue. I mean, look at the modelling, everything that you've got, the map on the wall there. And again, you've got the gates. Um, it would be, as I said, it'd be nice to see some checking stuff. But you get close to some of these people and they don't always get um, too blurred. It really depends. Here you've got staff behind the bar here, which is excellent. You know, as I said, it would be nice to have airport staff behind the check-in desks. But again, beautiful rendition of people. And grab yourself a cake, guys. I mean, this is awesome. So let's just pop outside here. And then we go down this way here and you can look, we've got um, all sorts of things here. There's your departure lounge. I mean, look at the, the images on the, on the wall. Again, high resolution. You can see them up close without any blurring. There's your toilets. And again, signage is really crisp. Okay, so we have a couple, a bit of repetition of people, but you know, I'm not really worried about it. It looks good. It really does look good. Now we're coming towards Landside here. I mean, look at these posters, these, these photographs. And you have people sitting in the right places. They've done a lovely job with this terminal and with make, bringing it to life by adding people. It would, it, it's a shame that they haven't added people elsewhere. really nice so in through the windows here's check-in so you've got two guys um, okay they're not airline staff really I don't know how it is at the real airport I don't really expect to see engineers checking people in but uh, yeah no problem again a lot of these things are really the um, uh, the wishes or at the behest of the developer if they choose not to go the full way and add um, airport staff properly um, and in other places even though I sort of put it up as a small criticism you know I accept that this is a quality scenery and the more I look at it the more I'm thinking it's worth the price so again it's just it's really nice out here now we're landside baggage carts, dolly carts there. It's very nice. It's just really nice. There's the baggage reclaim hall inside there. And again, you've got people waiting for their bags. There's some bags on the belts. Just lift a little higher. And there you can see. I mean, it's been beautifully modeled. There's a real ambience about the terminal because uh, it, A, it's been so well modelled and B, it has people which give it the character you'd expect to see. So there's your windsock. And again, really nice fence line. Again, we're up close. Great signage. 
And you've got these buses all faithfully recreated as per the real world. I mean, they look stunning. Models look great. I mean, nothing default about this lot. And the golf carts. And once again, beautifully 3D modelled parking area. Nothing left to photo ground at all. And the foliage just enhances it all really nicely. Let's have a little pass along here. Very, very nice. Very nicely done. So let's have a look at the boat landing here. I mean, look at this rockery. <laughs> here we've got a couple of people taking a selfie. Again, great signage on both sides of the sign, to be honest. And look, they've even got rust on the railings there. So we go down to the boat dock. I mean, it's nice, isn't it? It's a very nice rendition. Again, no people, which is a pity. Okay, so let's turn our attention now to the boat harbour, the marina, as, it, as it's supposed to be called. Try and slow down a bit here so you can get a good look. I love these palm trees. The fauna has been really faithfully recreated. So there are your fancy buildings. Now, nothing inside. But I'm wondering if there's some sort of parallaxing on there, because I can see curtains. It'll be interesting to see what this looks like in the dusk or the darkness hours. I've got, and that's yet to come. So again, quick tour over the boat harbour, the marina here. I mean, it does look fantastic, doesn't it? The models are great. Oh God, look, they've even got jet skis. And that's quite impressive. Got a boat on a lift there. So here's the Whit Sunday cruiser that you will see if you've got the Reef World scenery. Really, really nice model. And again, wonderful detail. Now I said about people, and th these are the sort of things that makes it important, I think. Here we are with another little restaurant. seating area and you've got no people it's it's crying out for some static people but as you can see I mean it's just beautiful really is stunning buildings are great um, but as I said I think it's crying out for people they've done a wonderful job with static people in the terminal and that really gives it brings it to life I'd like to see the same done outside You've got a marina here that's got everything except the people who operate it. But all of this is just amazing. So you've got places here where people could be sitting out or standing or talking. Picnic tables there. But this has been done in such wonderful detail. It's truly amazing. Okay, so let's lower the light now to dusk and see what we're looking at. Okay, half past five in the evening. Um, it's summer here in the northern hemisphere, but of course it's winter now out here in the southern hemisphere. There you can see the terminal. The lights are just about to come on. And we've got blue airfield edge lights. The ramp looks pretty clear too. There we are looking towards the threshold of runway 32. And again, the lighting's nice and subtle. 
runway is nicely lit and you've got the various areas that you need. You've got the helicopter area here that's beautifully lit. Here's the control tower. In fact, let's have a quick look at the tower while we're here. So here's the control tower from the outside. As you can see, they've got misted windows and it appears to be lit inside. So let's go and have a look. So here we are inside the control tower. Again, nicely developed. The lighting's nice. You've got even got the printer down there. Got everything you need. Um, he's got his screens, computer, uh, binoculars. That looks, I mean, it looks really nice. So here's the helicopter ramp. As you can see, the um, hangars there is nicely lit and the ramp has subtle lighting. The source of the lights looks pretty good. You've got the, uh, the light sources here. Can't see much in the way of a Sobo Globes, which is good. So on this side where the Fenham is parked, this is a fuel farm. Not much lighting over here, but then I wouldn't really expect it to be. So as we track across the runway there, you can see the blue airfield edge lights, which will help you find your way off the runway to the parking area. And that's, let's go and have a look at the terminal now. And there we are. Beautifully lit inside. You can see the, to the contents. So if you arrive here at dusk and park up, this is the view you're going to get. Um, and again, no Asobo globes in sight at all. Everything beautifully and subtly lit. Just looks great. A quick view looking out towards the ramp there and my aircraft. And in the other direction too. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So here's your baggage reclaim bit. This is airside where they put the bags onto the ramp and they go into the terminal. And here we are inside, which you can see where the bags come through and they get picked up. And just a quick shot there looking from inside the terminal towards land side. So there we are looking towards land side of the terminal. We've got the lit windsock on the right there, which is a nice touch. And um, you've got your vehicles here. And I like the idea that these are lit. You've got the um, tail lights lit, which makes all the difference. Little touches like this have really worked for me. And here you can see the terminal beautifully lit in the lighting. Um, and we've got the proper standing lights. Once again, we can't see any Asobo glows floating where you really shouldn't expect to see them. It's very, very nice indeed. And another plus for me, the boat dock itself is also lit and as well as the boat. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is really nice. Very, very nice indeed. And there are two friends that have been there all day trying to take a selfie. Bless them. So a quick shot across the marina from this distance so you can see what's lit and what isn't. Again, lots of subtle lighting, nothing really overblown. Here you've got these really wonderful apartments we saw earlier and it looks like they might be um, really enhanced in the night. We'll have a close up look in a second. But you've got subtle lighting of various boats around the marina, including the big ship out there. And there's just a wide shot you there showing the terminal airside and land side and the boat dock. Oh, it's just beautifully lit. So let's go and have a look at the marina, see some close-ups. So there we go, as I suspected, a little bit of parallaxing and a little bit of subtle lighting and you get this really nice effect on these um, apartments here. And here we are looking down the boat docks. There you can see various bits of lighting really subtle just here and here nothing overdone and here but just enough to give you um, a, a really nice effect so if we do a slow travel across the harbour look you can see various boats are lit in a subtle way some are some aren't but you get this really nice effect it's very nice now as we go round the harbour here there you can see the hotel complexes in the distance that are lit. And again, you've got this very nice effect with partial lighting. Okay, we've got a few Sobo globes floating around, but I'm not really worried about that because they've done such a good job here. And this is really nice. Well, 
and the effect is, is stunning, it really is. The lighting is very subtle. Okay, as you can see, it's getting pretty dark now. Let's drop the thing right down to night time. Okay, 8 p.m. local time, as you can see, the darkness is fully upon us. And uh, now the lighting comes up, up a little bit and you can see the subtleness of it. It looks really, really pleasant. So here you can see the airside ramp and the terminal, beautifully lit, looks great in the darkness. And again, nice to see some default vehicles moving around. They do give a bit of atmosphere. For me, it's just a pity that some of them go into the runway. But it all looks very pleasant. Quick view of my aircraft there, complete with stairs. Um, as you can see, the ramp lighting is good enough to illuminate it properly. So here's the terminal land side, complete with people. Um, and the lighting again is really nicely subtly done. And there's the boat dock. And a quick nighttime shot across the marina here. Okay, you can't see very much, but the lighting's quite pleasant. The buildings are beautifully lit, very, very subtle. So here's a close up shot of some of the buildings behind those um, apartments down below the waterside. And again, you can see this lighting effect that gives this almost parallax approach here. But um, beautifully done, beautifully modelled, and the, the effect is very, very good. And just another shot on the other side of the harbour, showing you some of the lighting as it appears at night time. And here you've got these various buildings on the other side of the harbour. Oh, it, it looks fantastic. Another shot here of the three buildings a little further down. And everywhere you look, it just looks beautifully done. And here's a shot of our little cruiser parked up there, complete with this blue underwater lighting. It does look nice. So a quick high level shot there, showing you further up towards the beach, past the, the way from the airport. There's the cruiser in the distance. I'll leave you to explore that at your leisure. Okay, let's quickly bring up the dawn. Okay, just before 6.40am, and you can see the last of the lighting is pretty much there. It goes out at 6.40. Sun comes up there behind the hills. Um, it's a beautiful sight. There's runway 32 threshold. And there's the boat harbour, looking really nice in the sunrise. Okay, 9am local time, we're back in the morning, early morning here, and time to give you my thoughts and conclusions. Okay, first of all, um, I was asked at some point, or where, where they were thinking about adding me to the test team, but I hadn't heard anything from them, um, and then I saw the scenery was to be released, so I bought this, so I actually paid for this, it wasn't sent to me by or seen, I paid for it, um, but as ever, the thoughts and comments um, and opinions are my own entirely. They've not been influenced by the developer at all, although I am still in contact with them. Right, so price. So this is getting on for $30 or £24 UK. It's one of the most expensive sceneries. Not the most, but one of the most expensive sceneries currently available for flights in 2020. Do I think it's worth it? Um, having spent an hour or more looking at this, as well as with you in this review, I have to say yes. At first I balked at it and I thought, what? But uh, when you look at the level of detail, it, it's incredible. They've left nothing to chance. The signs are so good that when you go right up close, you can still read them. Um, during the daytime, there's so much here left to explore. If you just get in a helicopter and just tour this island group, it's fantastic. The detail of the buildings, they're weathered. They've, uh, the terminal's been beautifully developed inside. It's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And then there's the terrain. You look at the terrain features and the water effects. 
There's so much here that makes this one of the top sceneries, in my opinion. Uh, criticisms, okay, I mean, the criticisms are really not much. Probably the one big thing is that they've added people in the terminal, but they've left it out of the rest of the airport. There are parts of this scenery that are crying out for people. The boat docks, the marina especially, some of the little restaurants around. Even if they were just statics, I don't think they would do anything to the frame rate. And by the way, as you've seen as I've been moving around with the drone camera, practically no stutters. I don't think I've had a stutter at all. Frame rate is excellent. I've been going sort of quickly and slowly, varying the speed, and I've not had any problems with frame rate. So this is a spectacular scenery that's been so well modelled that it's so it's really smooth. But some of the standout features are, like I said, the terrain is fantastic, even close up. The beaches look wonderful. The fauna looks great. Palm trees, the way it's been placed around the airport looks really good. And in terms of detail, when well, nothing's been left to chance, everything down to the fence line and the signs on the fence line and um, the signs inside the terminal get right up close and are still eminently readable. The marina looks beautiful and especially at night when you've got the subtle lighting comes on and you've got the apartment blocks there that are lit. It, it's a spectacular project that's had so much work done. Um, Ozseen have admitted to me it's their biggest project so far and you can see why. But like I said, criticisms, there really aren't many. You've got vehicles going onto the runway, which is a bit of a no-no, but this happens in a lot of sceneries. And I'm not really going to mark them down for that as such, although it would be nice to see it stopped. But probably the, my, my biggest misnomer is the lack of people outside of the terminal complex. Like I said, the marina... Okay, you've got those that, that couple that were taking a selfie down by the uh, boat dock, which is nice. And you've got people land side of the terminal out there. But especially around here, where you've got the little restaurants and the various little features. And um, here where the apartments are, it would be nice to see the odd person standing around or group of people. And a couple of people maybe on some of the boats. You've got the, um, the cruisers down here in the, in the, in the harbour. That, um, and this one here. be nice to see a couple of people enjoying a couple of drinks on there. And then on the other side, you've got the beach. But having said that, this, is, this scenery is fantastic. It's got an awful lot of features. For a small island, I mean, this has got so much more than you might even expect at a major airport. It's been so beautifully done. So um, am I happy to spend nearly £24 for it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to use this. We're going to fly in here. And um, look out for a video where I get the helicopter and we'll do some exploring. What a fantastic project. And um, kudos to uh, Ossin for doing yet another fantastic follow-up scenery. So, Hamilton Island Airport. Victor, a Yankee Bravo Hotel. Mike, payware scenery by Ossin. And this is version 1.01. .01. I would love to see version 1.2 with people added outside of the terminal complex. It's available from both Sim Market and Orbix. I'll give you the Sim Market prices. €27.59, which equates to roughly $29.51 US. Or £23.67 UK. As ever, US and UK prices are conversion estimates from the Euro, and they do include tax or VAT, which of course can vary depending on your country of purchase. This is one of the top expensive sceneries, but it's also one of the top sceneries um, anywhere. Don't think I've seen anything as detailed as this in terms of the modelling, particularly with the level of detail, the LODs, um, and the terrain features are some of the highest resolution features I've seen in any scenery. It's pretty spectacular, and it's well worth the price, and uh, comes highly recommended. So guys, this is Lee wrapping up this long review. I, I make no apologies for the length of the review. There's so much to see and so much I haven't touched on yet that you can explore. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you've been on the fence about this, I hope it's helped. And um, I welcome any comments you might want to make. Thank you all for your support. I'm getting close to 800 subscribers now. And um, I appreciate all of your comments. I try to respond to all of them. Thanks for joining me in this product. Um, look out for some uh, new reviews next week. So take care, guys. You have a great weekend. Those of us in the UK are going to be enjoying some sunshine. Uh, let's hope those of you um, south of the equator are going to have the same too. So take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.